Thank you, Chime Choir. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Medford United Methodist Church. It's good to have you with us. My name is Joe Monahan. I want to welcome you on behalf not only of myself, but also our associate pastor, Kathleen Stoltz. We're really happy to have you with us. I hope each one of you will take a minute. There's a red attendance pad that's on the inside of the pew. I hope that you'll pass it down. It's one of the ways we get to know one another's names. I hope that you'll pass it to the end, and, the, and as it comes back by you, um, take note of the names of the folks who are seated around you. Greet each other by name. And if you are visiting today, if you'd like to share with us your name and address information, we'd love to be able to let you know about things that are going on here at the church, put you on our mailing list. So I hope that you'll give us the opportunity to do that as well. You can always learn more uh, out in the hallway. There's some information about our ministries. Take a look in the bulletin. There's lots of information about what's going on. Uh, check out our website. Follow us on Facebook. Uh, lots of ways to learn about us. And al always you can uh, find information for Kathleen and I. You can send us an email and, uh, and touch base. So uh, just a couple of announcements that I want to share. Uh, first of all, uh, about next Sunday. Next Sunday, we're going to be celebrating Scout Sunday. And so we encourage all of our boy and girl scouts to, uh, to come in uniform next Sunday. Next week, we're also going to be uh, beginning a new series we're calling The Art of Neighboring. And it's a series designed to help us think about how we do ministry uh, with those closest to us, people who are our neighbors, uh, people we are spend time with at work, uh, maybe at school, uh, people who are in close proximity to us, and uh, how do we do ministry with those who are right in our own backyard. So that's what that uh, series is going to be about. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, speaking of what's happening right in our own backyards, we have an opportunity. Uh, a couple years ago, we adopted a park here in Medford. It's uh, the Medford Park, and it's off of Mill Road. And uh, I hope that you'll come out and help us to clean that park up. And that's going to happen on April 17th at 1 o'clock in the afternoon after church. Uh, here it's a Sunday afternoon so I hope that you'll come out and uh, join us for that also uh, let's see the other thing that I want to lift up I want to lift up uh, an opportunity to to learn maybe you're doing your taxes right now and you're kind of looking at your finances and you're saying wow um, maybe I could be doing some things better well there's an opportunity that you have uh, with what's called the uh, Financial Peace University so Financial Peace University is a program that's designed by Dave Ramsey, and many of you probably know who Dave Ramsey is, written a lot of books, has a, a weekly radio show about personal finance, and uh, comes at it from a Christian perspective. So if you're interested in that course, um, the first, uh, how many signups? Nine. Nine signups are uh, going to be at a discounted price. So take a look, about, so take a look at that information in the bulletin. Um, you can definitely talk with Pastor Kathleen about it. She understands the program and has, has uh, been through it and, and knows about it. So. Uh, we'd love to have you sign up for that and uh, check it out. And uh, finally, I want to introduce to you our guest preacher, uh, Jim Cummings, is here from Urban Promise, one of our ministry partners, and we're excited to have him here as well as some of the students and uh, some of the other staff from Urban Promise. I'm really excited to have them with us and uh, to just have a little bit more of a connection uh, to this really important ministry partner who's doing a lot of great work in Camden and to learn more about what they're doing. So I thank you all for being here, and we're grateful for your commitment throughout the morning. Jim's been here. He's preached uh, the first two services, so now he knows what it's like to preach three services on a Sunday. So there you go. My limit is four, and then I lose my voice. That's what I've learned. <clears throat> That's pretty much the end of it. So let's continue now. Uh, Kathleen, will you lead us in the call to worship? Good morning. I invite you to stand as you are able and join me in our call to worship. For God so loved the world, the sparrows, the mountain lions, the fish, and the people. For God so loved the world, in success and failure, in sickness and health, in mediocrity and brilliance. For God so loved the world, enough to become one of us, enough to suffer along with us, enough to offer new life for us. For God so loved the world. Let, Let us worship God.
may be seated. I invite you now to join me in our opening prayer. God of the empty tomb, you are the source of our life. You have given us a wonderful world and permeated it through and through with your grace and your love. You have promised that you will give us your spirit to be with us as we journey through this life. Yet we confess the many times when our eyes can't see you, can't take it in, can't comprehend how you can be at work in pain and disappointment and sorrow. We need your spirit to lift our sights to your wide horizons. Teach us to pray with such openness to you that you make yourself plain to us. Bring us to that place where we are willing to place our lives in your keeping and submit your life-changing love and to move with you into the wide open spaces of your salvation. We ask these things in Jesus' name, our light and our salvation, who lives and reigns in the bright glory of the Holy Trinity forever and ever. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. The season of Easter is about new life, forgiven, resurrected life. It begins when we die to the fear of judgment and rise in the grace of Jesus Christ. In his name, you are forgiven. In his name, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. Let's take a moment to greet those around us with the peace of Christ. I'd like to invite our children to come up for our time together. Come on up. Children of any age are invited to come up. <laughs> you lost your tooth. Look at you. You pulled it out? Wow. Just today? No. It was after, it's before last night. Before last night. Okay. Oh, hi, friends. Good to have you all with us. Hey, all right. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, we got some more friends coming. Okay, so last week we celebrated Easter. And there were a whole lot of things that were different last week. What were some of the things that you saw that were different last week that helped us to celebrate Easter? What? The Hallelujah Chorus, yeah, that was one of those great things, great, we had some great, great music, and that was like the exclamation point on that service, wasn't it? What else, Tim? Um, everyone was waving palms. That's, well, that may have been the week before they were waving palms, but last week we had something else here, and we had palms, but we also had, what did we have? What? Jesus. Jesus rose from the dead. That's why we were celebrating Easter. But we had this whole big cross of flowers. Do you all remember the flowers that were here? Yeah. We have no flowers this week. Why? Well, because 
East, well, Easter is over. That one Sunday a year that we celebrate Easter is finished. But you know what's great? We actually, in our church, in, in the church around the world, we celebrate that Christ is risen every Sunday. That's one of the reasons that we have these big worship services and we celebrate Christ is risen every single Sunday. And we celebrate that God loves us so much that God sent Jesus into the world. Now, there's another thing that we have happening that reminds us every, not just every Sunday, but every day that God loves us. We just have to look outside and God reminds us of the trees that God made and the flowers that God made and all of the wonderful things. So I have a creation, a story of creation here that's just a little bit different than the one that's in the Bible, okay? So listen and you can hear it a different way. In the very beginning, God's love bubbled over when there was nothing else. There were no trees or birds, no animals, no sky, no sea, only darkness. But out of this love, God spoke. And God said, let there be light, and there was day, and there was night. And when the first day was done, God smiled and knew that it was good. On the second day, God said, let there be sky where the clouds can float and the wind can blow. And the sky was bright blue and beautiful. And then on the third day, God said, now let the waters gather together into the oceans and let the dry air appear. And God decided to make the world even more dazzling with trees, with tall, tall trees and long grass. And then the first flower opened in all its glory. And on the fourth day, God said, let the sky be filled with the sun and the moon. And God scattered stars all across the sky, sparkling like diamonds. And on the fifth day, God said, let there be birds to fly and sing and, and fish to swim and splash. And the world was filled with joyous sounds of birds and all kinds of other things. Because on the sixth day, God said, let there be animals. And there were elephants and giraffes and cats and mice and bees and bugs. And suddenly, the world was really, really a noisy place. But something was missing. What do you think is missing? Us. Us. You've got it. Then God said, I'll make people and I'll make them just like me so they can enjoy the earth and take care of it. And God did just as God said. And it was all so very, very good. God looked at everything that God had made. And you know what? I bet God clapped God's hands together and said, isn't it wonderful? And on the seventh day, you know what God did? God he rested, but I think he also just laughed and laughed and looked at his world and said, this is a great place. It's very, very good. It's noisy? Yeah. yeah, it can be noisy, but it can also be very, very quiet. So God loved us so much that God gave us the world. So even when we don't have Easter Sunday, we can remember that God loved us and gave us Jesus, and God gave us the whole world. God's love is huge bigger than anything we can even imagine. Even a giant? Even a bigger than a giant, yeah, bigger than anything. So let's remember that, and we'll say a prayer before you go back to your seats, okay? Dear God, help me to enjoy and care for your beautiful earth. We love you just like you love us. Amen. Okay, thanks for coming up, everybody.
Good morning. Good morning. It is great to be with you and celebrate this Easter season. I have some friends with me from Urban Promise I've brought this morning, and I'd like to introduce them. I have uh, Courtney De La Cruz, who works with me in the Office of Experiential Learning at Urban Promise. I know that sounds rather academic. Um, I'd like to call it the office of learning is fun and full of adventure. <laughs> Would you guys agree? And, and I also have three amazing young students that are uh, at the Urban Promise Academy. Your Melis, Jalisa, and Christian. They will be uh, riding uh, in a few weeks in an event called the Pedal for Promise. And they'll be, uh, after the service, out here. We have a small table. We can share more with you about that event. But I also want to give a, a shout out to the team from Medford United Methodist Church. Uh, there's a group of folks that are going to be writing, uh, helping us to raise money for the programs we do at Urban Promise. Um, the students who are here today could really tell you why we ride. Um, there's lots of fundraising events, there's lots of cycling events that are going on, um, and I believe ours is something special, and I don't know if anybody could tell you better than these three as to why we ride. So I'd like to encourage you to support your team. I, I mentioned in the last service, and I, I don't want to start a little trouble here, but I ought to tell you this, there's a Presbyterian church. <laughs> up in North Jersey, a good two hours from here, Caldwell Presbyterian. And for the past number of years, they have been the top fundraising church for the Pedal for Promise. Now, I'm not a Methodist, but if I was, and I, <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Um, what would we have to do to be competitive with that church? What, what's that a number yeah. we're talking about? Well, um, do you know? I do know. 
Yeah, I, I, I do know. Um, I would tell you you'd have to break five. You'd have to break five thousand um, dollars. Yeah, and if you think a few people raising a hundred here, a hundred here, that's not too big of a challenge. I, I don't believe. Um, you've done it before, and I'm sure you can. Uh, but en en enough, enough said on, 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 on that. Um, meet these three guys, and I think they'll inspire you. Uh, for sure. Um, you know, on my way here this morning, I, I couldn't help but notice all of the amazing signs of spring. Um, as I drove past the field of clover and all the dandelions so bright and, and, and beautiful, the forsythias uh, out in bloom and, and so much. And um, I actually cut my grass for the first time uh, yesterday. Um, so yeah, spring, spring is here, but it made me think of a conversation that took place some years ago between St. Francis and God. I'm, I'm not quite sure how we got that conversation uh, in, in text, but I'm going to share it with you because I think it's, it's kind of interesting. And um, It's God speaking to St. Francis, and uh, God says, Frank, you, you know all about gardens and nature. What in the world is going on down there on the planet? What happened to the dandelions, to the violets, to the milkweed, and the stuff I started eons ago? I had a perfect no maintenance garden plan. Those plants will grow in any type of soil. They withstand drought, they multiply with abandon. The nectar from the long lasting blossoms will attract butterflies, honeybees, flocks of songbirds. I expected to see a vast garden of color by now, and all I see are those green rectangles. And it's the tribes that settled there, Lord. Uh, they're, they're called the suburbanites. They started calling your flowers weeds, and they went to great lengths to kill them and replace them with grass. Grass? But it's so boring. It's not colorful. It, doesn't attract the butterflies, the birds, the bees, only grubs, sod worms. Do these suburbanites really want all that grass growing? Apparently so, Lord. They, they, they go to great lengths and, uh, to grow it and to keep it green. They begin each spring by fertilizing the grass and poisoning any other plant that, that crops up in the lawn. The spring rains, the warm weather, that probably makes the grass grow pretty quick. Uh, that must make the suburbanites happy. Well, apparently not, Lord. Uh, as soon as it grows a little, they cut it, sometimes twice a week. They cut it? Do they then bale it like hay? Well, not exactly, Lord. Most of them rake it up and put it in bags. They bag it. Why, is it a cash crop? Do they sell it? No, sir, just the opposite. They pay to throw it away. Now, let me get this straight. They fertilize the grass so it'll grow, and when it does grow, they cut it off, and then they pay to throw it away? Yes, sir. Well, those suburbanites must be relieved in the summer when we cut back on the rain and turn up the heat. That surely slows the growth and must save them a lot of work. You're not going to believe this. Lord, when the grass stops growing so fast, they drag out hoses and they pay more money to water it so, it can so they can continue to mow it and pay to have it hauled away. What nonsense. A at least they kept some of the trees. That was, sheer, that was a sheer stroke of genius on my part, if, if I say so. The trees, they grow leaves in the spring. They provide beauty and shade in the summer. In the autumn, they fall to the ground. They form a natural blanket to keep moisture in the soil. They protect the trees and bushes. It's a natural cycle of life. Lord, you better sit down. <laughs> the suburbanites have drawn a new circle. As soon as the leaves fall, they rake them up, they put them into great piles, and then they pay to have them hauled away. No, no. What, what do they do to protect the shrub and, and, and the trees? Um, 
How, how do they keep them safe through the winter? Well, after throwing away the leaves, they go out and they buy something called mulch. <laughs> they haul it home and they spread it around in place of the leaves. Where do they get the mulch? Well, they cut down the trees and they <laughs> grind them up uh, to make the mulch. Enough, enough. I don't, I don't want to think about this anymore. St. Catherine, you're in charge of the arts. What's our movie for this evening? Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> Lord, it's a story about, I, I, I don't want to hear any more. I think Frank just told me the whole story. <laughs> it's too true, yes? <laughs> Over the years in my ministry at Urban Promise, I've had the privilege to trek to some amazing places with some amazing young people. We've gone uh, far and wide uh, and near and close, uh, Colorado, Utah, trekking through the Rocky Mountains. We've gone to the Pacific Northwest. We go to Maine every summer. We kayak off St. George's Peninsula. We've been to the Florida Everglades. We've seen some of the most amazing creation. We go to the Pine Barrens, Barnegat Bay, the Delaware Water Gap. But I have to tell you, I have a favorite place that's not far, Assateague Island. Ha has anybody been to Assateague Island? I see a lot of hands. Um, it is indeed a very, very special place. We go every fall. We, we load up our bus, our trailer. We load it with the wooden canoes and kayaks that we make in our own boat shop. And I, I, I just love, you know, it's, it's a barrier island, a, a national seashore, and you can set your tents up right on the beach, right next to the dunes. And the wild horses, I mean, they come into the campsite sometimes. And um, uh, we go hiking along the dunes, we hike into the maritime forest, we see the brown pelicans diving into the ocean. Out on the bay, we'll see the great blue herons, the egrets, the oyster catchers, the osprey, the horses eating the salt grass. At nighttime, we build a fire on the beach. And we gather around the fire, and we tell wonderful stories, and we share highlights, and we shout out to one another for things that uh, we've done kindness to each other. And if it's conditions are right, you can see the stars. And it's a sky like none other. I once had a student say to me, Mr. C, is this the same sky I see in Camden? And I'm sure even in Medford, you don't see the sky the way you'll see it in Assateague Island. It'll capture you. And then that nighttime, we crawl into our sleeping bags in our tents and we have the steady rhythm of the waves crashing onto the beach that puts you to sleep. And then in the morning, here's my favorite part. I get to wake up all these teenagers in the dark. I love it. And I get everybody up and I say, hey, let's get down to the beach. We've got to get down for the sunrise. You know, and we all kind of crawl out of the tents and we head to the beach. And, it's an October morning, it might be a bit chilly, we have our blankets around us and we're all kind of huddled together. And then the sun just peaks above the horizon and a golden light spills across the surface of the ocean. Be with me now, close your eyes, because this is the time when I say, I want to share with you the creation story. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, day one. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the water from the waters. So God made the dome, and he separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above 
the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening, and there was morning, day two. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called the seas. And God saw that it was good, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, And there was morning, the third day. What I find so interesting, as this story is written about the creation, it's on the third day that the writer, for the first time, uses that phrase, and God saw that it was good. And he uses that each day thereafter. Well, I have this image before me of the creator, of God stepping back and looking at what he's done and being in awe and and marveling at it. You know, I I, I imagine God just kind of stepping back and saying, oh, baby, this is wonderful. Now, I know God probably doesn't speak that way. It doesn't matter. But I sense that feeling. I sense that feeling. And when the writer says, and God saw that it was good, how could you not? You know, I have an image of the boat shop where we build our wooden boats. And I can tell you on day one when students first arrive at the shop and they've got blueprints and stacks of wood, for many of them the first time they've ever been in a a wood shop, never mind a boat shop. Some might not even be able to tell you what's different between a canoe or a kayak. And there's a lot of anxiety, there's uncertainty, they're being told about these power tools that could cut their fingers off if they're not careful. Um, There's kind of a big sense, there's tension, You you can feel it. But you know, it takes about maybe five to six weeks before the boat takes form. And now you see, you see what it is you're building, and I can tell you that day is a different day in the boat shop. There's laughter, there's energy, there's a sense, I'm building a boat, and that boat's going to take me somewhere, I'm going to have adventures. At that moment, I asked my students on the beach, have you ever made something that you felt just so special and proud about, you know? And Kairos raises his hand, he says, yeah, Mr. C, when, when I was in middle school, I... I got this kit and we built these shelves and I painted it like with graffiti like I had tagged it and I I gave it to my grandmother and it's on the wall in our home and we have our family photos on it and every time I look at it I just feel so good I made it everybody gets to see it and then one other girl Shanice said well Mr. C in art class with Mr. Robert we did these self-portraits, and I did this watercolor, and we got it framed, and um, I took it home, and it's now in my house, and it's on the wall, and um, every time I look at it, I just feel full of joy. You know, and then it was Jaylene, and, and she raised her hand and said to me, well, like, duh, Mr. C, it, it, it was the canoe that I built last year in the shop. But, you know, What was most special for me was the day we launched the boats. And I got to share it with my mother and my sister. That was a moment. That was a moment for me because I I don't think I ever, with such clarity, really understood what the creation story was all about. 
And I, I think the very essence of that story and how Jaylene explained was the sharing. A creator that created the most amazing world we know and gave it to you and me to care for, to enjoy. It, it was the sharing. The same creator that gave us his only begotten son who died on the cross for you, for me, for all of us. The very essence of the gospel, it's about a God who has given us everything that we need and set the example of sharing everything we've gotten. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we give thanks to you. We rejoice. We rejoice in the new season, the newness, all the new life around us, Lord. We rejoice in the possibilities and the promise and the hope that every new day provides. Lord, help us to be the best stewards of the best that you have given to us. We ask all these things, we pray these things, Lord, in your name, because you are the God we love. Amen. And uh, over the past several weeks, you know that we've been uh, engaging in this food drive, uh, and we've had some video updates to tell us how things have been going, and we have our final video update today to tell us the results. food fans. Once again, this is Ben Carl representing our MUMC youth groups and welcome to Food Center with our final March Madness food drive update. First off, we want to say a huge thank you for all the MUMC youth groups, youth directors Claire Rich and Bethany Carl, and all the volunteer leaders for their help by sorting, packing, and weighing the food. Without their help on Sunday nights, none of this would have been possible. Also, special thanks to our Outreach Food Drive coordinator, Karen Dvorak Humphreys, for all her help during this process. And now, over to Chris Carl for the final scores. And here are your final scores. The bagging boxers ended up with 827 items, while the Arbor State toiletries ending up with 992. The Fighting Canaries of Jarferson U with an impressive 1,270 and our tournament champions, the Moolah State Cash Cows, with their late fourth quarter surge totaling at 2,012. 
While the cash cows were our technical tournament winners, the real winners of this tournament, the families served by Turning Point UMC Food Pantry and the Christian Caring Center. All of the food and toiletry items together added up to a grand total of 2,495 pounds of donations. All food items were equally divided between the two organizations. The Turning Point UMC Food Pantry specifically requested toiletry items as an area of need. We are thrilled to donate all 992 items to them. With this in mind, we gave the majority of the monetary donations to the Christian Caring Center in the form of Acme gift cards. Last year, we contributed 74, and this year, 100. The remaining cash donations were given to Turning Point, exceeding $550, a donation we were not expecting to be able to make. This wraps up the Easter food drive. All teams played a great game, both organizations were given fantastic donations, and there were no tournament snubs like the Monmouth University Hawks. For Chris Carl, the UMC Youth, the Outreach Committee, and all of us here at EFDN, the Easter Food Drive Network, we thank you for all of your generosity and support. For the final time, I am Ben Carl, signing off. Back to you, Joe and Kathleen. So we do want to thank you very much for your support, and uh, I thank you guys for making the videos every week. It's been uh, really, really entertaining and a lot of fun. So I thank you very much for all the work that you put into that. Um, you all don't know exactly how long it takes to do a two-minute video. It really is. <laughs> there are hours and hours in each one of these. So I'm really grateful. And uh, Ben, it's, not, it's probably not going to be your last time saying this <laughs> word, I wouldn't think. So. Let's continue now, but let's offer God our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. And if you're visiting with us today for the first time, we want to say thank you for being here. We look forward to seeing you again. You're our guest today. You don't need to feel obligated to put anything in the plate. And uh, we'd just like to continue now by offering God our gifts.
pray with me? O oh God, you know the condition of our bank accounts as well as you know the condition of our minds and hearts. We can't hide anything from you. Receive our gifts and use them for your good purposes in the world. Guide us to be your servants. May we listen when you speak. Amen. You may be seated. As we gather here at the table this morning, I remind you that this table does not belong to the United Methodist Church, but it belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's the one who issues the invitation. That invitation is to all people who seek to live in a new relationship with God and with their neighbor through Jesus. As we receive today, we'll be uh, receiving by intinction, which means you'll be given a piece of bread to dip in the cup. We'll come by the center aisle and we'll return by the side aisles. As you come forward, please be in prayer for that person who's in front of you in the line so that each person can be prayed over individually. If you can't come forward for whatever reason, please let us know. We'll make sure that we bring the elements to you. And we'll also have gluten-free communion. It'll be available at the right-hand station as you, as you come forward. So let's continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And because you are so good, we offer to you this morning our joys. And I know there are some out there. We have joys to share. Ben turns 12. All right, happy birthday to Ben. Ah, oh, praise God. And so with your people on earth and with all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Bless Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. We trust that when we gather in his name and we share our prayers with you, that you hear us. And so we come to the table today with these concerns. I want to start with a couple um, that I know about. One, we, one of our churches burned down this morning um, as a result of the high winds, um, which led to a tree falling on the church and a wire falling on the church. Uh, that was at the Mount Pleasant United Methodist Church uh, in Millville, in the Millville area. So we want to pray for that congregation this morning. Also, I understand that there's been an Amtrak derailment as well um, with a couple of fatalities. So we want to pray for, um, pray for those who are involved with that. And we have some concerns from the congregation here this morning for Douglas Eaton, who's um, co contemplating a move uh, to Texas from California. We want to pray uh, for him and for his family. Are there other concerns that we have this morning as well? Owen. Mm -hmm. Yes. For baby Owen, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pray for John Crozier as well as in the hospital and uh, trying to figure out what's going on with him. We also received word um, that Ruth Tercy had broken her hip and is in the hospital. So prayers for Ruth Tercy. Are there other concerns that you have? And Finally, Lord, we... Oops. Got another, and, finally, Lord. Yes. 
So we also want to um, share a concern for the broader world, um, thinking about youth around the world who are at risk of radicalization. So we do want to pray uh, for peace in the world, uh, especially in the area of the Middle East. Um, just continued prayers for peace. Lord, we thank you for your son and for all that his coming means for the world and for our lives. By the baptism of Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, and you delivered us from slavery to sin and death by making with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. And then he broke the bread and shared it with his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, then, when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He shared it with his disciples, and he said to them, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It's poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Now pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us, the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Now with the confidence that comes from knowing that we are the children of God, let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite those who are serving with us today to come forward.
Let's pray together. Oh God, we give you thanks for this opportunity to share once again in this holy meal. And we give you thanks for the opportunity to be part of the body of Christ here and around the world that continues to serve you and serve others as we show our love and care in the same way that Jesus did. As we join together with all the saints in glory as part of this body of Christ, we just say thank you for loving us. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. I love it when there are those fake rhymes in a hymn and you want, really want to sing Victor Rye, right? I want to thank Jim again for being here. I want to thank all of you for being here, for our students. Thank you so much. It's really a great thing to be able to, uh, to celebrate the ministry of Urban Promise here in worship and uh, to celebrate this partnership that we have and look forward to doing much more work together. As you go forth from this place, go forth knowing that the gospel is about about sharing. It's about God's sharing with us, and it's about our sharing that word with others, and that message of salvation, of forgiveness, of hope. Go forth into the world taking Christ with you. Amen. Amen.